Knock, knock. Ch cheers. Who's there? <laughs> I was actually curious. I tell you a joke. Go ahead. I tell you. So um, one uh, one guy on the market in Cluj goes there and finds this lady on the market and says, "How are you doing? You are still making those masks and selling those masks?" Oh, so no, 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 no. I'm not doing masks anymore. Now I am boiling vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, George. Thanks a lot. I, I can always count on you for cheering up the atmosphere. Okay, so this is perfect. You know what? It doesn't matter. We said we were going to start on time and I think everybody, every, I see so many faces here. So I think we're ready to start. Um, I, I wanted to start by telling a little story. And uh, this story actually starts about six weeks ago when one day I got a call from a close friend of mine who is the head of a venture capital firm or private equity, I should say. Um, and um, he asked me to take a look at a deal. And he said, I think you should take a look at this one. Um, I didn't give it any like two thoughts. We get uh, in our firm, we get about you know, 10, 15 calls like this every month. So I really just turned around to Ligia, who's my partner and CEO of our firm and the investments. And I said, Ligia, let's take a look at this deal. So it was about three weeks later and probably three meetings or four meetings later when I got another text from Ligia who said, um, Mihai, I really think you should take a look at this deal. And at this point, I, I knew this was something that was important and I knew this was something that I really had to spend some time to put some effort into it. So I met with the firm and uh, it was a foreign firm. It was a foreign firm coming to the United States um, they were raising uh, $50 million at a $300 million valuation, so a pretty sizable firm. It looked absolutely amazing. And um, we were told we are investing at a 20% markup to the original value because we are investing from the United States. So I reached out to the CEO or one of the presenters and I said, how many people do you have in, uh, how many people do you have in your home country? And uh, he said, well, we have about 500. And I said, how many people do you have in the United States? He said, um, we have about 300 in the United States and we have tens of family offices, VC firms, angel groups, selling these, this business to our community in the United States. That business was not a Romanian business as you can imagine, the business was based in Israel and we ended up investing a significant amount of money with them. On the flip side of things, about two years ago, I started looking into a company that was called UiPath. When I started looking at UiPath, I had known, for, uh, I had known about it for quite a while. Uh, but at the time, UiPath was worth about $2 billion. I have been trying to buy my way into UiPath ever since without success. Today, UiPath, or this month, UiPath will be one of the largest or the largest IPO on the New York Stock Exchange, having a valuation that according to the last capital round, capital raise, uh, having a valuation of about $35 billion. This is a Romanian company, but although we are all Romanians, none of us had a chance to participate in a deal like this. And I sort of this, this is one of the main reasons that prompted me to bring so many of us, to, to bring together a small group of people. And we spoke about how much it would mean to our community to start to create a community like, like what other ethnicities have. Um, I'm sure that many of you have had similar experiences where you wanted to participate in deals and you couldn't. Many of my friends are either in real estate and they want to expand into stocks and cryptos. Other people are in tech and they want to expand in real estate or they're ready to take a leap of faith, either start their own company or start looking at a venture capital. Most of us have at least once looked at deals on the other side of the Atlantic. What we have, an up, what we have here is an opportunity to build a community that, was, that will help us all participate. And if this grows to the right size with the right people, we might just have enough clout 
so that future UiPath type opportunities will not pass us. You see, on our own as individuals, we typically do not have access to deals like this. Within a community, we would have the sheer financial power, deeper reach, access to deal flow, and future opportunity for deal flow. What really unites us here today is that we're all successful people who want to learn more and expand our horizons. Thank you for being here today and making this possible. My name is Mihai Lehenen. I am the head of a company or the owner of a company called MDL Investments, and I've been doing this for quite a few years now. The truth is, it is really not fair that I sit in front of you alone here today. A large people really worked hard in the past to make possible this, to make possible something like this today. And we're, I'm talking about people like Radu or George who've been doing this for many, many, many years. So all we're doing here today is we're just building on, on, their, show, on their efforts for almost a decade now, maybe more. Um, and you'll hear more and you'll learn more about it in the, in the minutes to come. However, before I continue, I, I must say a thank you and I'd like to take a step back and I'd like to bring to your attention a few names. And then this is in no particular order. Julian Kalinov of Seattle. Hi, I see you on the screen right now. Uh, it's great to see you. Doreen Montano in Washington, DC. George Roth and Bogdan Druzzo in San Francisco. Simona Vasile and Teo Lazar in New York. Mircha Goya in Phoenix, Arizona. Christian Luputz here in Chicago. Gabriel Grionu who moved from Boston to Indianapolis and Christian Komsha out of London, UK. Today would not have been possible without so many people's contribution. And, and we're starting to see the seeds of what it means to work together. In the next hour, we will, have, we will see five people talking about what it means to create a community, what it means to have a, an ecosystem of organizations, how important it would be to build a bridge over the Atlantic between businesses in Romania and, and, and businesses in the United States. You'd be quite impressed to hear that there's quite a few people that want to invest from Romania into the United States. And you, as you'll learn today, there's actually some companies that are actively doing it. We have 90 minutes and I'm actually at 9.08. At 9.10, I would like to start our presentations. We have five people presenting today for 10 minutes each. At 10 o'clock, which is our time, so in 50 minutes time, we will be done with these presentations and we'll open a, a full Q&A session where I would ask everyone to post their questions in the chat and we'll have a free discussion. We'll bring you, bring you up on stage so you can ask your questions. In between these two times, there will be a two minute break. We'll send you a link. We'll ask you for an interest to participate again in something like this. This being said, before we start, we have two more things to do. Um, I'd like to ask Ted to, uh, to speak and, and give us a standard disclaimer. And um, I do not see here, can I get a confirmation that uh, Mr. Dumitrescu, the Deputy Council General is here with us today? Yes, absolutely. Good morning, Mr. Robert Dumitrescu is Deputy Council General morning. of Chicago, of Romania in Chicago. Mr. Dumitrescu, we will let you uh, say a couple of words, uh, a few words before we let Ted speak and continue with our discussion. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you very much as well. Uh, I think it's it's fair to say that um, uh, I have a disclaimer of my own. Um, unfortunately, at this point, we don't have a, a specialized, um, you know, representative um, on economic aspects. Uh, we used to have a trade commissioner and we are uh, hopeful that uh, soon, uh, rather sooner than later, we'll have again a trade commissioner with us that will uh, more than um, support this type of initiatives that uh, are bringing together um, potential investors in the US to the um, opportunities, great opportunities I would uh, emphasize in, in Romania. Um, that being said, I think uh, I, I could add a couple of elements uh, to bring a little bit of perspective and uh, political diplomatic framework, if you want, uh, for what Mr. Lehene uh, said. 
first of all, uh, we are glad that we have uh, Mr. Lekane, Romanian United Fund, uh, more precisely as a valuable partner of our consulate here uh, in Chicago. I think uh, there is great potential to develop, um, you know, a synergy, if you want, between the institutional side of uh, our consulate and uh, the potential of the Romanian uh, American community uh, here in Chicago in uh, Midwest and, and above. Um, I think this is an important uh, direction of development uh, at this point. Um, and we do have hopes for having more uh, projects on a variety of, of issues uh, that uh, we will be able to um, basically plan for and, and uh, implement uh, in the near future and on a medium term as well. Uh, speaking about the general uh, theme of this event, uh, opportunities for investment in, in Romania, uh, I think it's important to um, provide a little bit of um, strategic context, if you want. Uh, it's absolutely obvious that uh, our bilateral relationship uh, is uh, special, um, not only in terms of, um, you know, the, the usual um, importance that a uh, country with the geopolitical weight of the United States, but in terms of the uh, level of deepening the bilateral relationship that um, we have uh, together as, as people, as countries, uh, based on a communality of values. And uh, this is not only um, the level of statements, but uh, actually uh, we have a very uh, concrete, very um, strategic framework that is provided uh, since 2011. And this is, we are speaking at this point of uh, two decades of uh, bilateral cooperation in the framework of the strategic partnership for the 21st century. What exactly, uh, this uh, framework provided at the bilateral level, it's absolutely obvious, uh, first in the political military uh, realm, um, there are a number of, uh, I would say, spectacular developments at this point. Uh, it's, it's obvious, for example, uh, Romanian military pilots are training on F-16s, uh, fighter uh, planes. Uh, we have, uh, for example, um, uh, Patriot um, systems, you know, that are contributing to the defense of Romania in a region that has its fair shares of geopolitical um, challenges. So these are. I'm sorry, Mr. Council. I yes. just I would like to remind you that we have a very set time. We, and we have a time constraint. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, my point uh, was that basically, uh, while these are absolutely obvious elements, uh, visible, you know, that are well known to the general public opinion, uh, one of the main directions of this strategic partnership that we have is trade and investment opportunities. And I think what Mr. Lehene and uh, hopefully uh, today, the rest of the participants will be able to achieve today is actually to boost um, you know, the uh, bilateral interaction in, in this very um, promising uh, uh, area. I think Mr. Lehene uh, was able to emphasize you know, very uh, specific elements of, of this dynamic, if you want, that is beyond promising. But um, I would say that uh, from uh, our point of view at the institutional level, uh, there is definitely at this point uh, in time, a growing political consensus uh, back home, uh, no matter who is, uh, you know, uh, in, in terms of decision-making, no, no matter who is in power, uh, acknowledges the fact that uh, IT is, is a key element for the uh, prospect of economic development of, of Romania and uh, US partners are uh, uh, key actors, if you want, in the prospects for the development of this area. Thank you very much to Mr. Lekhan. Thank you very much Thank to so all much. participants for being here and I will leave the floor uh, to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Dimitrescu. I really believe that uh, you are spot on and this is exactly what we're trying to do here today. Ted, 
Um, we, we talked briefly before the conference about the standard disclaimer that should apply to this type of meeting. Uh, would you please help me with stating that? Yeah, sure. So there are about almost 100 people on this call today. And although, although we're talking about all sorts of investment opportunities across the Atlantic, uh, I think it's important to say we're not, we're not raising money here today. There's no solicitation going on here today. There's no uh, securities being offered here today. This is simply about creating uh, enhanced awareness about the different platforms, um, funding platforms, fu um, venture funds, uh, group companies and groups that are uh, intertwined with the Romanian tech ecosystem. And uh, it's about really connectivity. So this is about creating great, greater awareness, uh, putting people in touch with each other, perhaps for some follow-up, maybe some exchanges uh, you know, after this uh, via NDAs and some you know, proprietary data exchanges afterwards. But today is just really about creating awareness, but not any hard sells of security or, or uh, uh, any fundraising uh, at all. So I, as a lawyer, I just have to get that off uh, to everybody. Thank you so much, Seth. Scott, Jimmy, hi. Um, uh, George, I, I, I asked you to uh, make a short presentation. We, we're heading into the five presentations in the next uh, 50 minutes. We only have about 42 left out of the 50 minutes right now, so we're going to have to rush through. George, um, I have a couple of words that I wrote here about Radu Georgescu, who's our next, who's our guest, first guest speaker, I should say. Uh, Radu is one of the most respected serial entrepreneurs and investors in Romania, probably best known for selling Rav antivirus to Microsoft in 2000 in what was at the time, the largest deal in the Romanian IT sector. Having started 36 businesses, Radu joins today. Radu, um, what can you, well, uh, George, what else can you tell us? One little thing about George that we would love to introduce him on the stage and, you know, please, uh, uh, whatever, whatever fits your, your schedule and <laughs> keep, keep it between us. <laughs> yeah, perfect, thank you. Uh... Uh, before the meeting, uh, Mihai said that he will send me a little write-up about Radu to present him. I said, okay, I don't need that. Uh, I want a disclaimer too, because we had disclaimers. UiPath is not a Romanian company. UiPath was a Romanian company. UiPath is a US-based corporation. Mm -hmm. Actually, there are multiple corporations, but US is based in New York. But actually, UiPath shows you exactly what I'm sure Radu and the other friends will talk about, how to make a global company from Romania. So anyhow, uh, about Radu, Radu is like a historical figure in the Romanian IT and entrepreneurship. I call him like a Mihai Vityazu. So uh, why I'm saying, because uh, I met Radu in uh, 1998. He came with a group of IT people from Romania when the IT industry was at the beginnings, everybody's doing outsourcing. And we actually met when the Romanian presidents at that time um, uh, came to Silicon Valley and they signed the strategic agreement with Hewlett Packard. And we were in a bus, <coughs> um, was Radu there, it was Florin Talpes and many other names which became the, the names, the very successful names today. And Radu, and I, I told him this in uh, person too, Radu is basically the person who changed the view of the Romanian IT because his success of selling IP and uh, selling a company to Microsoft showed to the Romanian entrepreneurs that there are many other things that you can do outside the, the outsourcing business. So that's what I think Radu is the characteristic. He's the first one who showed uh, what this business is, what the uh, ecosystem is, what the VC, not VC, uh, what uh, IP type of uh, transaction means. And then him becoming a, a VC himself showed how Silicon Valley evolved, that from successful entrepreneurs, you become a, uh, an investor also. Well, that's what I, I could tell much more about Radu, but uh, I can tell you uh, also. No, you, I just you, want you, to... embarrass, you embarrass me enough, George. Thank you so yeah, much. I, I, I don't I, know if you like to be behind me, like. Thank you, or not, but I, I'll find <laughs> another name. But definitely you were a milestone, if you want, in the <laughs> IT history of Romania. Thank you so much, George. I, I'm, I'm really being, being embarrassed. And look, I um, thank you. <laughs> um, 
It, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Mihai, for, for having me here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, I, I'm here to tell you about changes and changes, you know, in my life and changes in, in, the, in, in the business that, that, that's happening. So life it, itself changes and it ch changes to communities and uh, technology followed and it changed, it, it changed to communities, uh, changed to Uber, to the Facebooks, to Clubhouse and all these kind of clever, crazy, very successful or very big flops uh, changed. And the business of investment changed. I mean, the VC appeared um, like 50 years ago or 40 years ago, whatever. And now the VC is kind of changing and the investment is changing and VC is changing to communities. And you look to, to, what, happened, uh, to what happened to GameStop, what happens to Robinhood, what happens to, to our crowd and all this, all this constant change in all the industries, including investment. And it's everything, it's more and more, it's changing to communities. And obviously this investment thing is going somewhere, it's going somewhere big, it's going somewhere great, it's changing. And it's not necessarily clear where, but it is changing towards communities. Now, I want to, to talk to you about SeedBlink. So before SeedBlink, um, quite a few of you know that I, I, I tried to raise a, a VC a, a, a couple of years ago and I failed. So look, I'm a great entrepreneur, great you know, business card and everything, tried to raise a VC, poof, failure. And I'm proud to, to, to talk about my failures. I mean, that was a great, great uh, inspiration and learning experience. I failed because I didn't actually want to do it. I'm not a VC. I'm not a suited guy. I don't know how to handle other people's money in that perspective. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a freaking entrepreneur. I know how to create a company, how to help other entrepreneurs, how to get in a team of great entrepreneurs and create a company that changes the world. I remember what has to be changed, the investment world. So let's not create a VC per se, which by the way, I failed raising. Let's create a tool that changes the VC world. So I got together uh, 12 months ago, and it's a damn early company, a very, very young company. 12, 12 months ago, I got together with, uh, with three other uh, guys, you know, um, to create Sibling. So four co-founders, very, very senior co-founders. And we created Seedlink that is actually going to change Europe's future by developing the startup investment platform, combining A, the crowd reach, B, the angels, angel investors flexibility, and C, the VC structuring. And yeah, there are a lot of other uh, equity crowdfunding companies. There are a lot of angel clubs and everything. There are a lot of VCs. But the interesting thing is that to put all of this together and to create a, a real platform to do this, right? And we got together um, uh, in creating Seedlink and we got a great team. We got already very young, but we got a great history. We're going to have a great future and we have a great partner. Getting each by uh, uh, on on on. Uh, on, on a row, like we have uh, four co-founders. It's um, Andre uh, Dudoyo, who's who's an ex-banker, bank CEO. One of those guys, you know, four uh, secretaries now got uh, off the bank and uh, roll, uh, roll up the sleeves and doing, you know, 16 hours a day entrepreneurial uh, work. We have Yonutz Dudoyo, uh, Yonutz uh, Patrajo, uh, that, I'm getting uh, emotional. Uh, we have Jonas Patrajo that was as well uh, a banker, uh, again, very senior uh, bank CEO, working now 16 hours a day. Uh, we have Carmen Seve, very great operationally, uh, a good CEO that moved three companies from Romania to the US and, uh, and myself. Um, have a great history. So we are very young, 12, uh, 12 months uh, of life. And we're already, after one year only, uh, at um, 100,000 uh, euro per month in revenue break even operationally. We already have 4,000 investors. And last year, we, we did participate in more than 40% of the investment rounds uh, in Romania, in tech, right? And this year, we are already at 70% of the investment rounds Seedlink is participating in. 
a great feature. We are going to take Europe by storm and consolidate this business. We are going to consolidate uh, this combination of businesses into a great European online platform for investing. And I was telling you that we have a great partner. And funny enough, you know, our best partner in, in this journey is the Romanian diaspora. So we are already working with a lot of Romanians all over the world. And I'm, I'm here to actually kind of beg you to keep an eye on us and, and look at this company as it is coming and taking the world by storm. Thank you, sir. I have one, I have one observation. Right. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to drop dead at 9.30, which is exactly in four minutes. Done. Uh, no, I just wanted to let you know, and we're going to keep going, progressing as, you know, on a time basis. Uh, so everyone, just, just a reminder, every one of these people, they have their own business and they're, they're basically interested in connecting with you at 10 o'clock, which is in exactly 30 minutes, we will share with you an interest sheet where you can mark and say, I would love to find out more about Seedlink as a company. And, and that's when subsequently the businesses will connect with you individually and you can have discussions and you can connect and, and find out more because in 10 minutes it's very little it's very hard to present like a full business Radu, would you be able to share anything like a screenshot or you know like how an account looks like so this investment platform is an online it's a website where you go and you invest in different deals and i think that was very eye-opening for me and i really love the idea because i thought i was mind blown by the, the int how interesting the idea was. And I said, this is exactly what the Romanian community needs. Yeah, it, it's gonna take me just one second to log in. So at the right. intersection of crowdfunding and VC and, and angel investing, we have this new platform, which Radu sort of created here, here we go. So th this is a this is a portfolio of of, uh, of quite a few companies. So we had uh, thirty five investments. This is a, a virtual portfolio. Uh, so uh, this person, you know, invested a hundred thousand um, um, uh, euro. This is how they invested. We didn't change the value of the companies as yet because nothing has happened. Um, if if you go and uh, search a specific company, uh, you can get into the details and um, and see you know the company details and the spv details and the value and the market cap and the uh, share value and how much you own of this company and then you can see the documents of the company and the reporting documents of, of that company so it's basically a proper portfolio uh portfolio management uh management system and keep in mind that th this is, again, this is a one-year-old company from the idea to now. And things are changing and evolving every time. We are now 20 people and uh, uh, releasing features and uh, both financial and uh, technology features every day. Thank you so much. You were right on time. And we would love to come back within the last 30 minutes. We're going to bring up again the subject based on, based on everyone's questions. Uh, Radu, will you allow me to move to, to our next guest then? Thank you so um, much. Thank you, Mihai. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Radu. Uh, so next we have uh, uh, actually a, an old and very close friend of mine, uh, Ted Cominos. Uh, Ted is a partner in a private capital group in a global 10 law firm, Evershed Sutherland. But that's not really what makes Ted special. Uh, Ted lived in Romania for almost a decade, uh, having left somewhere in the early 2000s where he advised some of the high profile deals uh, or deals in tech in the day, including the Jacob deal sale to Microsoft. Um, Ted is here, Ted reached out to me about a year ago and he said, what do you think about a Romanian, a, a platform for Romanian angel, angels, for Romanian American investors where people could bring businesses to the United States and you know, how would that fly? And and my mind was mind blown. And, and obviously we can, you can say that today is somehow the result of a seed that Ted planted in my, in, in, in my mind that I've been talking to George and I've been talking to Radu for so many years and somehow our business community put together. Uh, Ted, thank you very much for being here today. What can you tell us about Romanian American Angels and, and your latest ventures and yet? 
Thanks, uh, Mihai. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ted Caminos. I'm, I'm very happy to be joining you today. I hope you can see uh, my screen here. Um, for the past 20 years, I've, I've been focused pretty much exclusively on venture capital and private equity transactions throughout Europe, and, and including Romania and the US. And together with my colleague, Christina Adrampoka, who's on today, uh, we've been fortunate enough to advise on, on a number of venture investments and exits involving Romanian tech companies, some with uh, the very entrepreneurs uh, on this panel uh, today. Uh, in addition to um, uh, GCAD, and there have been scores of others that we've advised on, and even just in Q4 of last year, we advised on a Romanian tech exit to Mocha, and we're currently advising on a deal that when announced in the coming months will be probably one of the highest profile acquisitions of a Romanian tech company this year and something we're really excited to be part of. Um, as Mihai alluded on a personal level, I'm part of a small group of American and Romanian professionals that have come together to make direct investments in promising early stage companies in Romania. We've established a clear set of investment criteria, um, including the company's ability to scale well beyond the borders of Romania. Uh, companies that have a large TAM and a clear path to exit uh, we take our time, we engage in lengthy uh, diligence processes, uh, often taking months. And as such, we uh, only do a couple of deals a year with equity tickets ranging from half a million to two and a half million euros, which for our investors typically translate into tickets or checks of about 25,000 to a quarter of a million uh, euros per deal. Um, our investors are active professionals with day jobs uh, who can add value in some fashion to the process. We're looking for member investors that can bring unique industry perspectives or strategic advice or contacts for management teams or otherwise can assist portfolio companies with their go-to market strategies. Um, we're admittedly very US centric. Uh, we're looking to strengthen a bridge between the US and Romania through investments in business dealings and professional networks. And with Mihai's encouragement and, and further to our discussions over the past months, we're looking to build this syndicate uh, of Romanian American angels um, over, over this year. Uh, it's a slow process. We're, we're staging it in a measured and kind of structured fashion. We've got participation agreements and, and we're looking for, you know, doing this properly with accreditor, uh, accredited investor status, good deal structuring and governance. Um, Mihai also asked if we had a current example of a Romanian tech company that we were you know, presently looking at to, to show to this forum today. And as it turned out, uh, we just were wrapping up a, a few months worth of diligence and research uh, together with my, our partner, Nikos Nikolopoulos. And um, we've, we've advanced um, terms with a company that fulfills all the criteria I mentioned earlier. And this opportunity has been very positively received by a couple of US family offices within our network and we're really excited about it. Um, and rather than present the company myself, uh, I asked the CEO if he wouldn't mind coming and present uh, a little bit about YEP to all of you today. Unfortunately, he's traveling on a, on a flight uh, and given the restricted pandemic travel schedule, he was unable to change that flight, but he was kind enough to prepare a video which I'd like to Play for you now, which I think is a little nice vignette on this uh, early stage tech company that we found very interesting that we're going to be uh, following up with and, and investing in. We cannot hear this, all right? We let cannot hear the sound of it. Sorry, let me turn that up. Let me turn that up for you. Sorry, one second. Is it a recording or is it mostly images? Because we can play without sound if, if, if there's if the sound is a little bit less. It's a recording, so let me let me get it up here. Sorry, give okay. me one second. I, it's it's worth hearing and uh, that we can see all your emails. I know, I know. I'm going to try to get this for you real fast here. Hold on. Uh, no, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in the meantime, I would like to say that if we didn't have a mishap, it wouldn't be, you know, this is our first conference, so, you know, it, it wouldn't be, uh, you know, it wouldn't look real, I would say. Um, so blue, we... blue, blue screen, blue screen missing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we, we, we need Steve Jobs for that. Sorry, sorry, Mihai. Let's see. You ready? All right, here we go. 
and thank you thank you Mara, for the introduction. Unfortunately, I won't really be able to join this amazing event in person today, but however, I have prepared a brief presentation that I would like to share with everyone. My name is Gordon Volkonsky, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of YET. I'll share my screen. I hope the quality will, will meet everyone well. Yeah. Uh, does everybody hear like a like a crackling sound? You bet on sport. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We hear it. Yeah, there's a very strong crackling sound. Would you try sharing? I don't. I don't think you can share without your volume up. Moment. Sure. Yeah, this is better. Is that Where better? The industry is ready for innovation. Outdated sports betting industry and technology has left customers often seeing a non-transparent and impersonal fan experience and user experience often or usually resulting in them losing all of their money. 80% of the time, the bookkeeper wins. Us at YEP, as true sport fans, have identified this shift of the whole indus industry from digitalization, from non-digitalization to digitalize, digitalizing more as a unique opportunity to engage fans to be able to stay connected, bet different, and bet social. YEP offers sport fans the chance to engage further by betting directly between them, having a fully transparent and user-friendly betting experience, and always a trustworthy partner where they can do what us as sport fans have done forever. We've always bet on sport events, me and my friends and my whole sports community, we've always bet between each other, be it for a fun stake or a real money stake. And what we at YEP now do is offer our users a of, of centralized app and version in which they can do it in a one versus one, so just two players, or in their large friend group, wherever they are on as many games as they want. And a big a beauty of our game is that in YEP, there's always a guaranteed winner. The house never wins. Our product, is built in a way to give the fans a truly fan first user experience where we put the fan in the first place alongside our betting core feature we have also implemented two, two additional features that we aim to give the fan the full fan engagement cycle what i mean by the fan engagement cycle is the following first of all the fan engagement cycle starts by always staying connected and always knowing where, when the, your next favorite game is happening. Then, where can I see this game? And what we've implemented here is a broadcasting overview, as you can see on the screen button on the, on the phone, um, where we can always let our customers know which broadcaster is showing their favorite team, their favorite games right now. Additionally to this, we have implemented a local sports bar locator where we allow fans to be able to locate the nearest sport bar in any jurisdiction that they are right now. And moving forward, the sport bar will be able to communicate which game they're um, broadcasting tonight. Users will be able to, um, to rate the bars and interact with the bars. And all of these features coupled with our amazing um, betting function where users can bet between friends, be it for real money stakes or for fun. We truly feel that we are bringing the fun and the, the lightheartedness back into betting, which is a beautiful aspect of the game, keeping fans more engaged between one another and to the game. Our core business model is simple. Fan, friends bet against each other and deposit money in the, in the app. Once the winning transfers are made, YEP receives a fixed uh, commission. Further down the line, we have identified additional revenue streams where we can also utilize our bar locator and broadcasting uh, model to, uh, in, to make it a profitable feature. But these are this is in, in later phases. Where we are right now, uh, our full app is developed and ready to go on both the iOS and Android store in the form of leisure betting. So this means no real money bets. Um, we are in the process of obtaining two betting licenses, one from Malta and one from the UK, which will allow us to launch a real money betting version uh, in multiple jurisdictions 
later this year. We are a founding team with ample experience in business and the sports industry and are excited to bring yet between friends into the market. Thank you very much for your time and have a great evening. Thank you so much, Ted. This is a great example of a business, Romanian business that could go global, especially if you're passionate about sports. This is probably interesting for you. And this really brings us as a topic to our next guest speaker. Uh, Sergio Birish uh, is here today with uh, Andre Dunca. And uh, Sergio is most is, is well known for, and I have a couple of, uh, I had a couple of uh, notes here, but Sergio is, is well known for being uh, co-founder of Trilulilu and also co-founder of Live Rail. Now, Live Rail is very interesting because it, it's a company that was sold to Facebook in 2014 for roughly, and we don't know the exact number, but roughly half a billion dollars, marking at the time the largest price being, being, you know, being achieved for a Romanian company. Uh, Sedju uh, is uh, present with us today. Sedju, uh, please unmute yourself and tell us uh, a few words about your next venture, Event Mix. Thank you, Mihai. Uh, hi, everybody. It's great, great to, to see you here uh, and be with you uh, all here. So EventMix is uh, my newest startup, uh, is a self-service white label solution for uh, virtual and hybrid events. So I hope in the future we will be able to host uh, events like this on EventMix. Um, uh, to tell you a bit about the, the project. Uh, I will first tell you a bit about the project and then show you a very short demo. I'll try to be quick. So the virtual events market basically exploded last year because of the pandemic uh, and the number of event organizers that switched to virtual events just grew exponentially. It uh, put the virtual events market on track to become a $400 billion market by 2027. Now existing virtual event platforms are split into two categories. Like the first category is focused on the long tail uh, of event organizers and there's products like Hopin or Airmeet, maybe you know them. The second category is focused uh, on the enterprise market. Uh, it's products like Welcome or Cvent. And this basically leaves the mid market significantly underserved. And as a result, for medium sized uh, event organizers is become overwhelming or too expensive to run virtual events successfully. Now, EventMix is a self-service platform that allows event organizers to uh, easily create their own virtual events websites. Now, um, I know uh, what matters for this target. Um, let me know if you see the, the website, if you see the screen. This works perfectly, thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Um, our customers need uh, ease of use, customization, branding, privacy, security and overall event a great overall event experience at a price that the mid-market customers can afford uh, and since our launch a few months ago uh, many corporate event organizers ran events on event mix including ones with thousands and thousands of attendees uh, and the magic is that it requires only one person in the organizer's team to manage in an entire event uh, event mix is that easy to use and uh, i will show you in a second just how, how, how easy uh, it is. Uh, now, the most important niches for us so far have been corporate and industry events because there are countless corporate and industry events happening each year. And our target customers uh, require uh, special features that the other products don't provide. Like for example, security features required by the healthcare or banking industries uh, because they need superior protection for the sensitive information shared during the events. Uh, we've run successful events for customers in Europe and the US, and we are in discussions with companies like Pfizer uh, or Raiffeisen Bank to be their main platform for internal and external events. Uh, and these are clients whose events gather tens of thousands of people every year. Uh, and this is only the beginning because demand is very, very high, and we've just set up our sales team in the United States, in New York City. Uh, so, and I know it's all about execution and that's why now I'm very focused on building a state of the art uh, sales organization uh, and maybe become one of the companies that uh, start from Romania and really take over, uh, do, do a big business in the United States. So let me show you very quickly a few of the features of the product. Um, so as I said, we are helping organizers create their own virtual event websites. So uh, this is a landing page for an event, a demo event, which is generated completely 
from our administration area. Uh, and basically we wanted anyone to be able to uh, create such a page. So for instance, if I wanna change the entire theme of the page, like let's change the color of the buttons. I just go to theme, uh, colors and fonts, and you can change the fonts if you want, you can change everything. I'll go to the colors of the buttons, like let's go for blue, okay. I'll save the changes and then go back, uh, refresh, and um, the entire theme of the event will change to blue. Uh, of course, well, I can you, change. Did you sorry. Tell us, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go, this is, go I mean, ahead. First of all, this is very interesting, but I asked you during our introduction. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, I'm sorry. I'm very happy to say that our firm has invested in, in Venmix. <laughs> uh, so we've actually considered this to be a, a proper company that has a lot of success going mm -hmm. forward. So I'd like to ask you two questions that I asked during our discussion. One, yeah. why would anyone use this when you know Facebook does this for free? And then two, tell us about your biggest competitor and their valuation and how they're making money. Because yeah, was... your product is very interesting, but I think yeah. that by comparison, we really need to look at what other billion dollar companies are. Doing. Right, I was, uh, uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, so this is, as I said, this is aimed at corporate event organizers. So for uh, a company like Pfizer to hold an event on Facebook where, uh, doctors are attendees, that's pretty much a no-go. Uh, and uh, that's why they need their custom solutions, branded solutions. Uh, I don't know if you can see from this demo, but it's on my own personal domain. So we can host these uh, events on the, uh, the, the company's uh, domain name. Um, and I'm sure if you're from the database. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, with Shopify, but it's this is like the Shopify of virtual events. So on Shopify, you go, you create your event, your shop there, you brand it, you customize it, but everything is hosted on their their servers. Uh, is the same with us, but it's and it's hosted on, on on our servers. Now our main competitor, the biggest competitor, it's called Hopin. Uh, they just raised their last round two weeks ago, 400 million at 5.6 billion dollar valuation after just one year of business. Uh, so the, the market is super hot. It's, uh, it's very, very big. And our, the main difference between us and Hopin is that Hopin is a venue, uh, meaning that you go on Hopin, you create your event there, uh, you send your users there and they become Hopin users and they join other events as well. Now, as I said, for our target customers, that's an unlikely scenario because uh, corporate organizers don't want to send, you know, doctors or bank clients to hop in to become hop in users. They want, they want everything in their garden. Now, um, there are obviously other solutions in, uh, uh, in, and, and I wanted to also log in and, and show you like the, the actual event experience, how that's, how that looks like. Maybe just uh, be mindful that we have exactly one minute left. Yeah, we, I know we have one minute. But just from this, from this view, for example, you can see uh, how an event experience looks like uh, with our product. And this is basically what pharma companies are using now. Uh, so, you know, 9096 type of design technology and everything. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, Thanks for thanks for the time. Uh, I try to be as quick as possible. The idea is that uh, we are in a very let's say early phase, but we're already growing, already setting up our, our team in the United States. We are a completely um, remote company, so uh, and we are taking huge advantage of uh, the growth of the market. So just to give you an idea, in 2019 on Eventbrite there were 4.7 million events going on. This is not a one winner take all market. It's a huge market uh, and a huge opportunity uh, for us going forward. Thanks a lot for uh, giving me the opportunity to show you our project. Sergio, that was a great presentation. And uh, we, I, I loved your background. I love that Andre Dunca is here. Maybe we hear from both of you again after uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, and we'd like to remind everyone that what we see here today, they're just teasers. It is your responsibility in about 10 minutes to share with us your interest and you can be connected with these companies and have deeper deeper discussions with them where you can actually learn about their model and you know how they work and what their perspectives are. Not only that, we'd like to remind everyone that this is this uh, while this uh, conversation is focused on tech, IT in general, 
this doesn't have to be necessarily a limit for what we do in the future as a community. Uh, so our forum will be asking you whether, you know, whether you're interested in other types of businesses such as real estate, crypto, biotech, uh, and uh, you will definitely have a chance to express yourself in there. Um, next, we have our last guest for the day before we start our, you know, free discussion and Q&A, Don Mihaescu. Don, um, he, he's the founding partner of, one of the founding partners of Gapminder. Gapminder being one of the largest uh, tech venture capital funds in Romania originally backed by um, European Investment Fund, a fund of funds, one of the largest multilateral financial institutions in Europe. Um, EIF's uh, backing of Gapminder represents a seal of trust and uh, uh, Gapminder is here today to share uh, their thoughts on the industry and also tell you a little bit more about how their business works. Uh, Dan, welcome to the stage. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Dan. So, uh, look, uh, we are very tight on time, but I'll make it even tighter. I'll try because I want to introduce also somebody to you that uh, in, within my time slot, let's say. So, uh, quick one Gapminder, it's a 44.8 million euro uh, fund with uh, two sub funds. One is a seed Series A fund, which is the largest part of it, it's uh, 38.6 million. And then uh, the difference around 6 million is uh, in uh, accelerator. We have a team that manages uh, uh, basically on a very specialized manner each of the sub funds. And um, so far with the seed and series A fund, we have, uh, we like to think we have some of the best uh, success stories of uh, the new wave of startups in uh, Romania. Uh, that includes Fintehoes which is uh, the FinTech of the year in uh, Europe in 2020, includes Type in DNA, which is incorporated in the US now and attracted to Gradient Ventures, uh, the AI fund of, uh, specialized fund of uh, Google and many others, uh, Credo Ventures, uh, Techstars Ventures and so on. Uh, and Daniel Dinesh uh, as an angel investor. Um, we invested in Druid uh, AI, which, why, which is one of the best uh, chatbot AI enabled platforms worldwide. Um, DeepStash, which just raised the Series A as well from uh, Connect Ventures in the US and London, and it's incorporated in the US. Um, so, and we have a, a lot of other good names here. We, we have Solidify, Machinations, and so on. So you will hear these numbers uh, going on. Um, so I would say that we have a pretty good view on what happened in the last four years. Basically, it took us like 10 months to raise the fund in 2017, and uh, we started in 2018. It comes at a moment when the ecosystem was a bit dry. Uh, the ecosystem had uh, his uh, share of, uh, or its share of success stories already at that moment as you said, uh, Rav and many, many others, and including UiPath uh, already proved at that moment. Uh, however, for the early stage companies, there was a dry season there. So uh, when we entered, we discovered um, a very, very good uh, ecosystem that it's overlooked. And uh, I'm saying this uh, uh, because I want you to seriously consider this ecosystem. It's a lot of potential here. And I see a lot of synergies with the existing investment vehicles into the ecosystem. To give you a picture, right now we are like three funds. Uh, we are the largest, it's, we are $53 million, or almost 45 in euros. Then it's a second one called Early Game Ventures, which is in the range of 26 million today. Uh, and uh, then there is a third one that it's to be raised in the range of uh, 50 million, uh, probably in the next uh, 12 months. Um, there are also, to be fair, there are, what we see is that the ecosystem has gone a bit more mature in the last 12 months, more specifically, more eight or 18 months where we seen two things happening uh, and they are very important. One, was the creation of SeedBlink and the initial uh, successes of SeedBlink that made uh, the snowball rolling. And uh, I have to give it to uh, Radu and uh, his colleagues that they could do a very good job for the companies that are 
at uh, mostly at product market fit stage, and uh, we work complementary with them uh, in uh, some cases, uh, especially with our accelerator bucket. And then um, one thing that happened very well, it existed before by all means, it's called Tech Angels. It was, uh, it's an organization of uh, angel investors from, from mostly Bucharest and around Bucharest. Uh, that started to become uh, more and more and better organized uh, in the last 18 months. Uh, it was a bit of change of leadership over there. And together with that, it was seen that uh, they got some speed. Uh, this is called Tech Angels again. Malin is with us. I, I'm going to let him speak maybe a few minutes out of my time at the end. So what they did, uh, you see the, the, the ecosystem becomes more and more structured. So in one hand, you have the seed series A investors like us that we do tickets between 500 and 1.5 million and then we do follow-ons. On top of us, there are the big regional funds that do tickets to five to 20 million, right? And our thesis is we move the success stories from Central Europe towards the US or London or better ecosystems, stronger markets. However, we need a pipeline. So this ecosystem needs, needs this uh, co coherence and this is what's going on here. And that's why I'm saying Seedlink and Tech Angels stand out because they provide financing to the ones that feel uh, in between, you know, uh, small tickets of 20, 50,000 and uh, the tickets of 300, 500,000. So both these can do it. The difference between them, it's uh, very, very visible and I'll let you judge yourselves. One, it's a platform that uh, basically facilitates these the investments. The other one, it's an association of angel investors with whom you can easily connect and work together. And what, what involves is as well, it's that angel investors would invest and roll up their sleeves and help those startups to a certain extent. So both, both things are very good. And uh, for us, we are very happy to work with them. Our role uh, is ob obviously to maximize the, the returns for our investors and we working on doing that. But on secondary, it's to be one of the waves that uh, creates the a stronger Romanian ecosystem. And I think the, the work between you guys and uh, as a community and the communities that are in Romania, um, uh, those that uh, uh, are around Tech Angels or around Sibling, would be very good. On top of that, in our portfolio as well, there are companies that might look for help expanding to US and uh, I might reach to you in the future. Now, we, we certainly hope so. Dan, allow me to allow me to introduce some Malene right after we have our next guest speaker, if you don't mind, uh, if that's okay with you. We've actually- sure. uh, But, but uh, let, let me give yeah. like two minutes from my time to him, of right? Course. Of course, absolutely. Perfect. Then absolutely. it was great to, then it was great to meet you. We'll keep in touch and uh, yeah, we'll pick it up. Thank you, Thanks. thank you so much. And I have a confession to make everyone. I looked at my schedule and since we, sl we slid 10 minutes at the end, I had marked the Dan Mihaescu at 9.50, but we were, were 10 minutes late. So how could I forget about, about my good friend, Vojko Pran? This is absolutely unforgivable. And Vojko, I will, have to, I will have to make it up with you somehow. So our next guest uh, speaker today is Vojko Pran. He's a successful entrepreneur and investor in many well-known startups um, in, in Romania and abroad. He's a founder of Arobs, one of the largest privately owned Romanian IT companies with over 1,000 employees based in Cluj, but with subsidiaries in Western and Eastern Europe. Uh, Vojku is here to tell us today about one of the ventures he introduced to me and I thought was extremely interesting a, a few weeks ago. Why is that interesting? Because unlike anything that you've seen before, this is a successful company in Romania that has exported its model to Holland and, and to UK and Germany. And what they want to do now is they want to make a greenfield investment in the United States. So we're not talking about, about a startup. We're not talking about like huge multiples. We're talking about a service company. But what was, what was very interesting is the association 
with over the Atlantic business. So it really adds to our spectrum of deals, the, uh, of deals types that we bring to you today. Boiku, uh, please unmute yourself. Welcome to the stage. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you, Mihai. You know, uh, sometimes it's, um, it's a no-go no to let an Ardelian, you know, go in the last, you know, because uh, uh, we are usually speak uh, quiet and uh, not at the speed that you are expected, but I will be on the full speed right now. And I'd like to share with you uh, one of the venture that uh, where I invest. Uh, and uh, that's the future workforce. And uh, why, uh, why I decide to present out of uh, all of the companies portfolio where I invest uh, future workforce. Because actually it's capitalizing on the UiPath success in the, in the area of uh, adding uh, actually service in the RPA uh, area. And uh, the company was founded in 2018 as a spin-off of a uh, few, few guys from software development. And uh, since 2018, uh, it grew six times. And uh, of course, early uh, st startups, usually the figures are not so impressive, but uh, you'll see uh, further what we can do, what, what, uh, what the company proved. So uh, it reached uh, 1.6 million US in uh, 2020, and uh, it covers few areas, banking, engineering, insurance, and uh, telco. And uh, more than that, uh, the net income uh, is uh, on continually increase because of a uh, few areas. You know, the, there is always in the service company, there is a gap between uh, how you sell and the customers and uh, how you pay your people. So uh, in this respect, RPA, actually the company is extremely good in providing uh, training to new people, to mathematicians, to uh, not exactly software engineers and move them into the uh, more to the customer side in in the area where they are paying more than software engineers so that's why you see the gap and uh, actually those are the services you'll uh, you'll see and uh, i can share with you more the presentation mostly i would say there is the extremely big potential to replicate the uipath model because right now there is a service company that generates some cash but there is also the guys are having an extremely um, good and uh, approach to the market in order to develop products. So uh, products based on RPA, I guess they are the next things in the market. And in all of the four area that I mentioned, they are, uh, they are definitely potential to develop product based on the RPA. Um, they are, there is also the different aspect uh, developer quality assurance that uh, they can emphasize and uh, evaluate different uh, other opportunities in the market in in the area beside you know the communication mining and uh, train and develop a custom machine they are actually prod product in development right now in some uh, ru uh, remaining companies uh, what uh, what the company accomplish you know about 200 robots about 62 hours working uh, and 2 million transaction. They are more than 2 million euros saved for customers right now. There are more than 50 customers and the satisfaction is very, it's very high. Right now, the company employ about 40 uh, plus uh, RPA experts and those are the customers. And uh, there is an American company, an American customer already. And uh, that brought us to the whole idea to bring the company to the to the US as a greenfield investment. And uh, those are a few references that we have in Romania and Europe. They are, uh, this is the team. And uh, actually you'll see, you know, the whole structure allows the big profitability. Uh, those, uh, those are a few words about uh, the founders and the shareholder. And uh, you see here, uh, I invested about 10% in uh, 2019 actually. And uh, that's how the, the things are looking right now. Uh, as this is not a pitch, you know, funding pitch, I'm more than happy uh, for, uh, to contact me to the, to the form that Mihai will show later. But those are the, our forecasts for the US. And why US? 
uh, you, you might ask yourself, actually because the US is the biggest market for UiPath also. And right now we, uh, we do have uh, two venture that uh, we are about to start. One is UK and one is Germany. And uh, I guess that will uh, say it all. So uh, why future workforce? Then uh, because it's a very big market size valued at 4 billion and uh, the company is technology agnostic. So it's not relying only on UiPath, but also on automation anywhere and the Microsoft Power Automate. So it will become for sure the then name in uh, RPA uh, technology and RPA implementation. So uh, what can I say? That's all. Uh, you know what? I mean, you saved me at the end, Volker. You've done an amazing <laughs> job. Uh, actually, you kept it. This, this was the shortest presentation of all, and I, I'm glad we left it at the end. Um, I'd love to say, everyone, we actually we have a chance here to get a, to catch up to catch up a little bit and get back on track. Um, every one of you should have received by now a link, either via text or via email, or you can find it in the chat. I will share my screen, Voiko, if you allow, and we can come back to this to these topics after we all try to do our, express our interest today. The form looks like this. Please start it, please complete it. Uh, it takes literally a minute and a half, between a minute and two minutes, a minute and a half and two minutes. These are the results. So we would love to see at least 100. We have 71 views so far, 45 of you started, and it took an average of two minutes to complete. So we'll take two minutes right now. Please fill in your form. Let us know what your interest is. I would also like to mention that many of you have checked, do not contact me by email, do not contact me by phone. Uh, if you have any interest, there's an additional email attached to this form because otherwise there's no way for us to contact you. All right, 101 views, we're going strong. Which means pretty much every one of you is, uh, is looking at it right now. Um, we capped at 100 on Zoom. I didn't know there was a setting that said we can't have more than 100 people. Julian, I would love for you to say a couple of words. You've been instrumental in making this together and bringing this together today. Um, well, you're, and, embarrassing me. you're embarrassing me. Well, I, I was just going to say a few words. I'm Julian Kalin. Um, I'm based in Seattle. I've been in the U.S. for uh, since 1998. Microsoft brought me over here. I, I had the pleasure to, to meet Radu Georgescu in 2000 when he visited Seattle and Microsoft as part of the deal. Um, I serve as the honorary consul of Romania in Seattle. Um, I'm quite involved in the Romanian community in the United States. I see here very many friendly faces. Um, I hope to, uh, to make friends with a lot of other people. Uh, right now, um, other than my, my, my day job is actually working for Facebook. <laughs> so, uh, so more than happy to connect with you. Uh, there's a strong community of Romanian uh, tech people as well as entrepreneurs in Seattle, um, just competing with uh, with George Roth, who's in the Bay Area. <laughs> so uh, more, more than like super, super happy to be part of this event. And, and Mihai, I love your, your energy and, and, and thank you all for, uh, for being here. Looking forward to connect with you again in the future. Thank you so much, everyone. He doesn't compete with me. He does, <laughs> we don't compete. <laughs> we cannot compete. <laughs> no, no, you, uh, George is in a different league. That's what he's trying to say. <laughs> um, it was, it was literally, um, like I said, this, this is a business community effort. There's so many people here that have come because they, they're friends of George, they're friends of Simona, they're friends of Julian or Theo's. Um, it, it's absolutely amazing to have all of you here today. We're opening up now the floor, feel free to speak up. Please post your questions in the chat room. Um, I have a couple of people that I would like to speak today uh, that are sort of linked to this entire effort. And you know, I would love to bring them on stage. But every one of you, please post your chat questions and then we'll pick the questions as, as fast as possible and we'll let you ask them directly. Um, so 
first and foremost, Dan Mihaescu, uh, he introduced us to Malin Stefanescu. Uh, Malin, if you will please uh, unmute yourself. It's a pleasure to have you here today. It's a pleasure to get to know you. Tech Angels is an inspiration for all of us. And, and we strongly believe that at the Romanian American community level, maybe we can somehow emulate your success. So Malin, what can you tell us about Tech Angels? Welcome to the stage. Tell us a couple of words. What do you think about today? Thank you. It, it's a great event. And thank you, Dan, for, uh, for bringing, bringing it up about Tech Angels. And I believe uh, the whole thing, the, you know, what is really nice about what happens in Romania is that the whole ecosystem is very open. And uh, I would just give a you know, message of friendship. I believe as many angels, you know, would join the ecosystem would be, you know, is better. And uh, uh, yeah, Tech Angels is just a group of angels. We are doing what we can. And I'm sure there are some other groups that can do, you know, better than us. So wish you good luck, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we would love to continue chatting with you. And like I said, we, we do believe our community has uh, a lot to learn from what you've done over there. I'm not sure if Mitch Goez uh, uh, is on call today. Uh, I have been trying to reach you. Mitch, are you here? He's one of the co-organizers today. And uh, he's uh, back in a movement and a website called Romanian Startups. Uh, so I kind of wanted to, to see if there's uh, anyone that can speak um, on behalf of Mircea's. George, how about you? Would you like to say a couple of words about? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, Mircea, Mircea is amazing. So he's in Phoenix and he created this uh, actually Romanian startups that throw. And I think for this group, it would be fantastic to, to cooperate with him because there you can really go in and find all the startups in Romania. It started this years ago. Um, what I want to say outside Mir Chagoya, too, too bad he's not here. I, I would like to say one thing. Um, so in order to create the right ecosystem, for something like this, like um, uh, an ecosystem for startups, um, uh, you need three elements, okay? So uh, it started in Silicon Valley because in the middle was Stanford. And at in the south, one mile south, it is uh, basically Page Mill Road. And one mile north, it's uh, Sand Hill Road. On Sand Hill Road, you have the money. On Page Mill Road, you have the companies. And these are connected because the people from Page Mill Road are the investors in the VC funds on Sand Hill Road. But in the middle is the educational system, Stanford. Romania always had the educational system, but was missing the two other roads. But now, thank God for, for people like Radu, like Dan, like, like Voiku and all these investors, now we have our own Sand Hill Road. And where is the Sand Hill Road? It's both in Romania and in, United, in, in the world. So we have a virtual Sand Hill Road. And due to the people like Sergio and many like Andre and uh, like Radu, we also have already the Page Mill Road where we have the network of people with a lot of success in this field. So we created this virtual ecosystem and hopefully this group here will be like a nucleus that you can build on to, inc to increase the Romanian virtual ecosystem where diaspora combined with those in Romania makes a lot of sense to be combined and to create this. That's it. George, I always like your metaphors. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I, I, I really would love to see more faces, you know, more people come up to the stage. Uh, I, know, I know you must have questions. I know there's a lot of people that are in this call that are in robotics, biotech, real estate, a lot of my real estate friends in Romania, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, in the United States, they're looking for investors, for example. I know for a fact that there's a lot of maybe people from the UiPath ma mafia or other people and mafia is kind of like, uh, you know, it's, it's a joke, but um, just like Pay PayPal mafia. But people in Romania that have money that would like to diversify in the United States. So that, that's a possibility. This is not, it should not be restricted to tech. 
However, we do feel that technology has really taken a front stage because of its ultimate success. And, and, and right now, especially because of UiPath, there's a huge spotlight on the Romanian tech industry. And we really believe that we can do our best to, uh, to, uh, to move things forward and hopefully create a community. Speak about creating a community. We have here today, and I'm happy to see the name because it just popped up on my screen. Um, and I asked him if, uh, if he'll allow me to put him on stage. Um, so Tiris, uh, at some point, if you could you know, share your face and, or, or at least unmute yourself. So Tiris Baghdad is, is the CEO of the Kiretsu Forum Midwest. Our firm has been a member of the Kiretsu Forum, we're proud to say, since its inception uh, here in the, in, the, uh, in the Midwest. Uh, we've been we've been together for many years. We've learned a lot. Um, we love the deal flow that we're getting through through Kiretsu Midwest, and to some extent, Kiretsu really inspired us to 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 bring this to bring this uh, a meeting today. And there's actually quite a few of us here that are Kiretsu Forum members. Uh, so, Tiris, what do you think about this initiative? And you know, do you have a piece of advice for us? Uh, I don't think you need any advice from me, Mihai. You've done, you've done such an incredible job pulling this together today. What an absolutely amazing event. Congratulations. Um, I mean, I, I think that, you know, one of the beautiful things um, as a community is what you are bringing together. And, and you and I talked yesterday about the strength of community and the importance of the strength of community. Um, you know, there was, a, there was a movie a long time ago that said, if you build it, they will come. And, and I feel the same way about building community. You know that we worked really hard um, to build a community for Karetsu Forum in the Midwest. And, and you and Ligia and, and Christian and others that are on the call today were a big part of that. And, and that's sort of how I also embraced the Romanian community. And now we're looking at real estate in Romania. And and, and the tech industry and projects in Cluj, uh, never in my wildest dreams that I think that, you know, as a Greek in the diaspora, I would actually be so excited to be involved um, in projects and activity going on in Romania. It has a lot to do with you guys. Um, you bring so much energy and excitement to this initiative. And I think the Romanian community understands the power of community itself and the power that you as a group collectively, you can create. So um, I'm excited both individually, but also as Karetsu Forum um, to work with you and, and hopefully get you guys um, energized and mobilized and whatever I can do to help, uh, you know that I'm here for you. So it is. Thank you so much. I had to share two, two secrets with you. So on Monday, the last text from, from Sotiri said, I'm flying to Cluj early May, are you coming with me? And I said, Definitely. Like, I can't let you go there for the first time by yourself. And then two, um, so Thierry's is part of a little little secret group of Americans that will walk via Transylvanica with me, hopefully this summer. So um, this is something that obviously it's parallel with anything with this discussion. But I, I just want to say how proud I am that there's so many Americans, you know, Greeks and, 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 and in fact, uh, you know, so many other nationalities that are interested in what's happening in Romania today. Uh, we have, we are starting to get questions from the community. We have 11 minutes left, so please start asking them quickly. Uh, Stefan Carlescu, would you please step on, up on stage and ask the question yourself? Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. It's great to see so many legends from the tech industry here. And I do have a questions for the uh, the guys who are in the industry for a long time, how come uh, every Romanian missed uh, UiPath? So none of the investors uh, got the opportunity to invest in UiPath when they were uh, in the beginning. So it, it's a question that I had in my mind for many years, how come all the Romanians uh, missed UiPath? Thank you, Paul. Can I, can I respond? For Don and this question is for Don and George. I, I can give my share of uh, my two cents on this thing. One, not all of the Romanians, but there is a guy called Dan Lupu, which is uh, one of the partners at uh, Early Bird, which is a very nice regional fund manager. Uh, with the name of the fund is Digital Enterprise Fund uh, 
one and now they raised the second fund which is 200 million so they had the initial ticket in the range let's say 5 million and uh, they prove to be one of the top uh, uh, institutional investors worldwide now they with the first fund there is a there are several articles that show that the first this first fund returned uh, 17 uh, times cash on cash or tvpi uh, and uh, you know the fund is not done yet so <laughs> So there is a Romanian who actually identified the opportunity with UiPath. The only thing is that he comes from Intel Capital and then he became a, a partner into early bird, right? So there is a Romanian that was involved into investing in UiPath. If I may jump, jump in a little bit here, uh, rather here. Um, UiPath, like all the, all the great successes was not very, clear uh, 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 it, it was not a slam dunk it was not an obvious slam dunk uh, at the end of the day i mean they were on the uh, when they got the investment they were on the verge of dying um it is very they possible had, that in yes, so they, they had like three months of uh, runway at that moment if i'm not wrong in, in an alternative history they didn't get the investment and they were now uh, just just history so uh, th there is like in any uh, great investment and in, in any great story, there, there are a lot of stars that needs to be aligned. And uh, UiPath is a, it's a absolutely great example of all the stars getting aligned. And some Romanian investors, myself included, uh, just didn't believe that that stars could actually align. And it, uh, UiPath is part of my anti-portfolio. And uh, I, I'm actually proud that, that I'm, I was there. I was part of the process. And I'm embarrassed that I didn't believe it. But uh, if, if I would have to take the, the same decision again with the data that I knew then, I guess I would take the same decision, yeah. Yeah, I, I would add something to this. So from the stars, was was definitely... Uh, Dan Lupu because um, he was an angel investor there, but uh, it was another one, another factor. A company in India actually saw the fantastic uh, power of this combined with BPO and they basically invested, they, they gave them a project in India and that's why uh, UiPath has a very large presence in India. It's not because of outsourcing, it's because that was a big part of their success. The fact that an Indian company trusted them and gave them this project. Thank you, George. That was a great question and great answers. I, I would like to introduce uh, one aspect to this whole thing because, and, and Don Lothrop, I, we're still gonna take questions, but Don, Don is a big investor in Romania he's creating something like a little community next to Cluj. He's building real estate. And he said something, he said, I have, a, I have a word of advice for everyone joining your conference. He said, private equity is something that I know how to do. It's, this is what I know how to do best. And what people need to understand is that there's, you need to spread your bets. If you need to be in it in the long run, you need to be in it to do 10, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 deals. And this is how you make your money because there's a certain measure of luck where 80% of, of, of startups in general fail. Don, is that correct? Is that I, that I portray your- Yeah, I, I think everyone I know who does this out in Silicon Valley says, don't do it unless you're gonna do 10 deals. And whatever you put in, in your first check, make sure you reserve two times that amount so you don't get diluted. There's so many stories of famous people who were maxed out on their visa card and getting their, their company off the ground. I didn't know the UI path story, but it's not at all uncommon. It's not at all uncommon. There's very few rocket ships that take off from the day they're started. Thank you. And once, and Jeff, on another answer to your question, um, is that once you get a serious institutional investor into the round, that's never again will another individual invest, unless it's the hot shot. Thank so. you, Don. I, I really, I, I, we have five minutes, exactly five minutes left. 
we're gonna keep it sweet, nice and sweet and short and we're gonna stay on time. Thank you. Um, so I had a question here in the chat that says, is it possible to receive more detailed documentation for some of these businesses? This is why we have that form. In that form that, that I've just posted in the chat, fill in and say, I'm interested in to, to speak more about XYZ company. Um, if you have questions outside of this, feel free to reach out to me, Simona, to Julian, any one of the organizers of today. And Simona, thank you very much for being here today. And Theo Lazar, I know you've supported us as well. This is, it's amazing to see all of your faces here. I will let Doreen uh, Monteanu, who's also a co-organizer today, ask his question uh, because I want to put him on stage and he actually had a question. And we're probably going to end this very soon, right after this. Thank you, Mihai. And good morning and good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations first for the, for the great event. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, glad to be here. I want to say hi also to my friend, Judy. Uh, I always kind of miss him. He's the spokesperson of the community, but, uh, but everyone, honestly, congratulations. Um, for the ones who they don't know me, just I'm from Washington, D.C., and I represent the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce here. I want to extend the invitation to you guys, all of you who are interested in, in, in uh, uh, the U.S. market and want to connect and learn. We're here to help. So see us as a strategic resource for you. Uh, my question is related to intellectual property, and um, I would like to hear maybe a couple of thoughts of the folks from Romania. Uh, how do they, what role they see uh, uh, intellectual property playing in, in their ventures? And the reason that I'm asking is because a lot of Americans, uh, the, the deficit that they are feeling in Romania is trust. And with intellectual property, I think we can elevate that level of trust. Uh, but I very rarely hear uh, uh, what that plays in their ventures. So I would be just curious to see what that, uh, where that one stands at. So thank you guys and good luck and congratulations all and nice meeting you. Okay. So we'd love to hear from either Voiku or from the, one of the funds that have access to more deals and uh, more flow. What do you think? Yeah, Ted? I, can, I can enter here. So, yes. Uh, in the, in the service industry, there isn't uh, actually any IP right, but on the product for sure. And uh, here uh, we must rely on, uh, on the US market on uh, lawyers, specialists, because uh, I am pretty sure that Sergio, uh, for example, with uh, his company doesn't want to, uh, to let the IP on, uh, I don't know, India or China hands <laughs> for sure. Uh, and uh, we know how to protect our sources, that's clear. Uh, just we need to protect it legally. So uh, that's, uh, that's what uh, happened. In, uh, there is one aspect in Romania, but I guess we tackle it pretty well. Uh, we sign confidential, confidentiality agreement and uh, for any contracts with employee that we have. So uh, uh, in the last years, I, don't, I didn't saw any case you know, of stolen intellectual property in Romania, but I, I might be wrong. So maybe, maybe Radu can uh, can bring some something more here. Any specific concerns or addresses, Dan or Radu, about intellectual property rights? I can take it if uh, Radu, please. For the ones who don't know, just FYI, but Romania is on the American intellectual property watch list. And that indicates a very high level of, cyber, or of crime and intellectual property crime uh, uh, that is just, I believe, plays a significant role in this trade and commerce, bilateral commerce, because we cannot attract more people because companies, they look at these things. American companies, they look at these things. And once we need to get Romania out of there first, and this is, this is not only a business problem, it's a policy issue as well, but I'm just curious what the business environment thinks about it. Let, uh, Doreen, let me push this and let me allow me to intervene because it's 9.30. Uh, there's a subsequent conference on April 22nd that focuses on the institutional side of things. Uh, today, we spoke a lot about startups. We spoke a lot about the tech sector. On April 22nd, and you will all receive an invite, that is if you signed that we can actually uh, contact you. Uh, please, uh, please understand that the form, when you sign the form on our website, more than half the people said, 
I do not want to be contacted by email. I do not want to be contacted by phone, um, which in some cases we're, we're trying to respect as much as possible. And we're definitely going to respect it going forward. The emails that you put in the email list are going to be used to contact you about, uh, about future conferences. It's 1030. Thank you very much. We've had an amazing pleasure I uh, to, to be with you today. Our entire community, not myself. And again, I speak for all my co-organizers. The last thing that I would love to say is we have an opportunity to build a community that will help us participate. We need to grow it to the right size with the right people. And we're really looking forward to reconnecting with you. The next uh, Mr. Lehene, yes. if I can intercede uh, very briefly with uh, four very short remarks. Yes. Uh, first, I would like to commend you for a very inspired uh, lineup of speakers and participants that are uh, showing in showcasing actually in very convincing terms, the strength and the depth of the IT sector in Romania. Second, uh, I think it's relatively obvious that the pandemic is a tremendous accelerator of the global IT and uh, that makes investments opportunities in the IT sector in Romania even uh, larger and, and more attractive. Third, with the risk of repeating myself, um, our main role as the Romanian diplomatic and uh, consulate network in US is to serve the Romanian community and to strengthen the bilateral relationship with the US. Our success and effectiveness depends entirely on our ability to interact with valuable partners like Romanian United Funds and the esteemed uh, uh, participants uh, like on events like uh, today. And last uh, but not least, I'm fairly certain that I can speak uh, in the names of the old, all the uh, co-organizer expressing the uh, hope that the expansive discussion that we had today, and you already uh, announced a follow-up uh, that will be, hopefully will enlarge on the themes uh, that were approached today. Uh, it's only a kickoff for greater things to come, uh, not only in the IT investment. Again, uh, thank you all uh, for being uh, with us today. Very nice closing words. Thank you very much, Mr. Consul General. Uh, we've had a tremendous pleasure to be here today. Deputy, Deputy Consul General. Deputy Consul General. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.